Hi guys, my name is Matt Seuss and I'm a fine art landscape photographer, educator, and publisher based in Bozeman, Montana. And I want to thank Richard Harrington and Skyloom for allowing me to come here and be part of this awesome launch party for Luminar 4, which comes out today. Today I am going to be talking about using Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Photoshop and inside of Lightroom. So let's go ahead and get started right away. First things first, when you want to use this as a plugin inside of Luminar, you want to make sure that the plugin is installed correctly. So open up Luminar 4 as a standalone program, and if you're on the Mac, go up here into the Luminar 4 menu and click on Install Plugins. Now if you're on a PC, that should be under the File menu. So let's go ahead and take a look at Install Plugins. When I do that, Luminar is going to check and see where it has been installed as a plugin. If it wasn't installed in Photoshop or Lightroom, you can click here and there'll be an Install button. You can also install it in Photoshop Elements or Apple Aperture. I don't have either one of those on my computer, so that's why these Install buttons are grayed out. So now that I know that this plugin is installed correctly in both Photoshop and Lightroom, let's go ahead and start with Photoshop first. Now, in Photoshop, here we are. I already have a photo loaded up here. This photo was a RAW file originally from my Olympus camera, and I processed it already inside of Lightroom, and now I opened it up as a TIFF file. I saved it out of Lightroom as a 16-bit TIFF file and opened it up here inside of Photoshop. And when I'm using Luminar as a plugin, my goal is to really fine-tune the image. So I'll do all of my main processing in Lightroom or Capture One Pro, and then I'll bring it into Photoshop and use Luminar as a plugin to add those fine-tuned adjustments to it just to make that image just pop just a little bit more. Now there's a couple cool ways of using Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Photoshop and one is to use it as a smart object. Now using this as a smart object this is going to allow you to go ahead and make your adjustments inside of Luminar and then when it comes back into Photoshop if you wanted to readjust one of those sliders you can go back in because it's a smart object you can go back into Luminar 4 and redo some of those adjustments that you made. It's a really powerful tool. So let me show you how to go about that. Now you can make a smart object on your base layer but I prefer to work on another layer. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate the layer and on the Mac I'm going to do Command J. That's going to duplicate my layer over here. On the PC it would be Control J or you can go up here under layer and click on duplicate layer. Now that I have my layer duplicated I'm going to go under layer smart objects and convert to smart object. Once that converts to a smart object, we'll see a little icon over here that indicates that this is a smart object, and we can see that in the lower corner of the thumbnail. Now let's go ahead and launch Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Photoshop. I'll go under Filter, Skyloom Software, Luminar 4, and launch it. Okay, now here we are inside of Luminar 4 running as a plugin inside of Photoshop. I know it's running as a plugin because in the upper left hand corner here I have options to cancel and apply. This means that you're running it as a plugin inside of another program. I also know that it's running as a plugin because the library is disabled up on top here. You do not have access to the library inside of Luminar 4 when it's running as a plugin. But you have access to all the other tools inside of Luminar. I can even click on the info and find info about my camera. So let's go ahead and edit this photo. You can see down below here that I have access to all my Luminar looks inside here running as a plugin, or I can go ahead over here on the right hand side and start making manual adjustments. I've already made some adjustments to this and saved it as a look before, so let's go ahead and dial that up and see what I did. What I ended up doing here was using the light tool and opened up my shadows just a little bit. We can see I used a little bit of AI Enhance just a tiny bit of the AI accent. Now moving on down to the AI structure, I actually removed just a little bit of structure from the photo. Didn't want to have it be too, too sharp on this image. And over here too, I also added a vignette. We can turn that off and on to see the effects of the vignette. What's great is that when you do use one of your looks or one of the looks supplied by someone else, you do get to see which tools were used because they're a little bit brighter on the right hand side than the other ones. We can go through the other ones in the creative category. I didn't use anything there. Nothing in the portrait and nothing in the professional category. We can take a look at the before and after. And you can see here, this is one of the strengths that I love about Luminar, is that you can just come in here really quickly and make just a couple adjustments and get a really big difference here. I mean, this is just a couple of slider adjustments that really fine tune this image and give it the pop that I need. 
This image was photographed last week out in Missouri on a commercial shoot that I was doing, and I got a feeling that the clients are going to really enjoy this photo, especially now that I've brightened up the middle here and have a real nice warm feel to it. Let me go ahead and click on Apply. This is now going to send this photo back into Photoshop, and I'll show you how the smart objects really come into play. Okay, on the right-hand side in my Layers panel, we can see that I have another category down here called Smart Filters, and I also have Luminar 4. Now, I talked about earlier how I can go back into Luminar 4 and make some adjustments. Let's say I needed to uh, maybe soften that vignette a little bit. Well, because it's saved as a smart object, I have that option to do that now. So all I have to do is double click on Luminar 4 in my Layers panel, and it's going to open it back up into Luminar 4 with all those adjustments that I had. Okay, here we are back in Luminar 4. Let me go down to the vignette, and let me just not make that as intense. So I'll back off on the amount slider and click on apply. It's going to send it back to Photoshop again with the new adjustments that I just made to it. So this is one of the advantages of using Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Photoshop, especially when you're using it as a smart object. If I did not make this a smart object, the only way I would have been able to go back and do any changes, I would have had to go back into my history to go back to right just before I brought it into Luminar 4 and then start from scratch again. I wouldn't have all those adjustments made, especially if I wasn't starting from a look already. Now what I would end up doing is saving this file as a PSD file. If I save it with all my layers intact, that means that the next time I open this file, I could even open it up on a different computer. All these adjustments are in that file. I can go in, even on a different computer, double click on that Luminar 4 in the layers panel and reopen it and be able to re-edit any adjustments that I made inside of Luminar 4. One other advantage you have to using this as a plugin inside of Photoshop is that you can take advantage of actions. Let me go ahead and we'll just go back down to where I duplicated this layer in my history panel. I'm going to go ahead and make a new action. So on my actions, I'm going to go out of button mode and I'm going to click down here and click on new action. And I'll just call this Luminar for lights. And I'm going to keep it in a set that I already have called Matt. And I'm going to click on record. Now what I'm going to do here is go ahead and go layer. Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. With these actions, actions are able to, you're able to pre-record certain steps in your photo to then, at the touch of a button, have that then applied to your photo in the future. So now that I've converted this to a smart object, let's go ahead and go Filter, Luminar 4, let's bring that back up. And now that we're back in Luminar 4, I'm just gonna click on this preset that I had again. This was the preset that I used earlier, and I'm going to click on Apply. This will now send it back to Photoshop again. Okay, back in Photoshop, under my Actions, I'm going to click on Stop, and now I've recorded this action, and we can see this action here called Luminar Lights. It's going to convert to Smart Object, and then it's going to run Luminar 4, and it's going to apply that preset that I just specified. Let's see this in action. So let me go into Button Mode. Let me go back into my History, right where I duplicated that, layer. You could even go one back where it was open and then start your recording on your action to have it do a duplicate layer right off the bat. But I started my action when I, right when I did the layer via copy. And let's go ahead here and click on actions and let's find that action that I just recorded. And scroll down here. Here it is, Luminar 4 Lights. Let me click on that and we can watch what happens. And this is just going to play out automatically, hands off. I don't have to do anything right now. It just made a smart copy a smart object of my layer, and now it's bringing it into Luminar, and it's going to apply that look that I gave it. Okay, now here's where the automation on the actions actually stop. You have to hit apply, but after I hit apply, it's now going to bring it back into Photoshop. So it did all that other stuff for me prior to automatically. Just got to hit apply once it's in Luminar 4, and then it'll apply it and bring it back into Photoshop, and here we are. So to summarize, two key important values of working with Luminar 4 inside of Photoshop, using it as a smart object so you can go back in and re-edit the sliders that you made, the adjustments that you made inside of Luminar 4, and also using it as an action to sort of speed up your workflow and sort of daisy chain a couple steps that you would do inside of Photoshop on typical photos. Next we're going to take a look at using this as a plugin inside of Lightroom. Okay, let's take a look at using Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Lightroom. 
First things first, let's go up under Preferences inside of Lightroom and click on External Editing. On the additional external editor, select Luminar 4, and then set the preferences here to what type of file types that you normally use. I usually use a TIFF file with Adobe RGB color space 16-bit with a resolution of 240, and then also check whether you want to have it stacked with your original. This is all settings that when it goes to the plugin, it's going to set it as a certain file type when it comes back into Lightroom. Once you have those preferences all set, we'll go here and take a look. Now I've already done a little bit of editing on this photo. I've opened up some shadows and, uh, and some highlights and did a little bit of vibrance and saturation here. What I'm going to do to this photo is that I want to replace the sky real quick. I obviously can't do that inside a Lightroom. There's no layers that I could use inside a Lightroom to be able to do that. So I'm going to use Luminar 4 to do that. And I have a nice lightning photo that I want to put in the background here. So I didn't bring up my shadows too much because the lightning photo was taken. There's a lot of clouds. So it's a lot darker. And I want to make sure that my foreground matches my sky as much as possible. It's a real key important tip to when you're doing your sky replacement you want to make sure that your the clouds or sky whatever you're bringing in there is going to match lighting wise with your foreground so what i'm going to do here is go under file export with preset and let's go down to luminar 4 all the way down here at the bottom and i have a couple different options here I have one where it's open source files. If I did that, it's going to send this original file with no adjustments that I made at all to Luminar. That's not what I want to do in this case because I already made some adjustments to this file. So what I want to do here is let's get back there, export with preset and click on edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So it's going to make a copy of my file based on those preferences that I just specified, a 16-bit TIFF, and then it's going to send that into Luminar for me to edit. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here we are inside of Luminar, and I want to replace that sky. So let's go ahead into my creative category and click on AI Sky Replacement. I'll open up the advanced settings, and let's go ahead and select a sky. Now I'm going to go down to Load Custom Sky Image, and I'm going to pull up one of my photos that has some lightning in it. Now this photo coincidentally belongs to my Ultimate Cloud and Sky Replacement Kit that I have available at learn.matsus.com slash clouds. It's a kit that contains 400 different sky replacement photos. Clouds, I have some lightning, I have some Milky Way, some night sky, and it also not only does it include 400 images, but it also will include some free bonus training on how to use the sky replacement tool inside of Luminar 4 and make the most of it. So let's go ahead and load that custom sky image right now. And I'll scroll down here. That was, let's see here. Had that, this is it right here. And I'll click on open. And we can see that it brought it in real nice. Uh, looks like I need to adjust my horizon just a little bit. So let me adjust my horizon positioning. We can see here, I'm just gonna drag that down just a little bit. And the horizon blending, I don't need to do any blending at all. This fit perfectly behind the mountains here. Don't need to use any of the closed gaps or sky local. You'll need to use those if you have a more complex type of a sky replacement here. But let's take a look at the sky temperature. I can lower that temperature a little bit, get rid of some of that red and yellow. And let's see here, if I darken that down just a little bit, I'll lower the exposure just a touch. Let's go into my essentials category and let's go under AI enhance give this a little bit of AI accent and let's take a look at the sky enhancer that's darkening it down just a little bit and maybe just a little bit of structure there we go all right that looks pretty good to me let me go ahead and click on apply this will now bring this back into Lightroom again okay here we are inside of Lightroom and we can see that here it is inside of my library automatically. You can see I have two versions. I was doing a practice version before I did this recording. So I have two different versions of this same image that I did using Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Lightroom. Now in terms of workflow, using Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Lightroom, you have two different options here. One, you can go ahead and make all of your adjustments inside of Lightroom and then send that over to Luminar to do that finishing touches, kind of like what I did when I was in Photoshop by going with export with preset. Let me select one of those photos here by going file, export with preset, and clicking on edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Or you can use Luminar 4 as your raw processor send it over by open source files, 
It'll send over that raw file into Luminar. You can make all your adjustments, then go ahead and when you click on apply, it'll bring it back into your Lightroom catalog as a, in my case, a TIFF file because that's what I specified in my preferences. That's it. That's all the time I have for you guys today. I hope this was really beneficial in sort of getting you a workflow and some ideas on using this as a plugin inside of Photoshop and Lightroom. Thanks once again, Skyloom, for having me on your launch day. Once again, I'm Matt Seuss, and take care. Thanks.